Okay, looks like we're just going to let everyone in the room right now. I can see lots and lots and lots of people filing in. Um, we'll get started right at the top of the hour, so it'll just take just a couple minutes. A couple things just to remember, and I'll say it again, but I, you know, I like to reiterate it. We will be recording this webinar, so understand that you'll get um, a replay after we're done here today. We also have some great FAQs that the SBA team um, and our team has put together so that you can have those for your uh, review later. Um, and then from there, you'll also get, again, we'll have a follow up in a, in a couple weeks with some people so we can talk about any updates that we have around that as well as a couple other things that are going on in the space right now. So just settle in and we'll get started here in about two minutes. Okay, folks, so we're right here at the top of the hour. So I hope to get things started right on time. Um, I do want to say thank you so much for joining us today. I know there's a lot going on in the world, but for those who made time to be here, um, you know, great first step. My name is Misty Stutzman. I am Misty Stutzman Fox. I got to add that one on. I'm actually the uh, Director of Entrepreneurship and Small Business here at the Institute for Veterans and Military Families here at Syracuse University. For those of you who don't know me or who don't know us, I would encourage you to get to know us. We run over 11 national programs and international programs that meet military affiliated entrepreneurs where you're at on your journey. But in addition to that, we do things like this, where we pull together a band of our favorite people and some of our amazing partners to make sure that you can get the updates on the ever developing resources that you need for your business. So joining me today, because I usually make it a habit of trying to hang out with folks that are smarter than me. I hear it's a really great habit to have um, as a person. So we're really trying to make that a new thing in 2021. And I did just that today. So to joining me today, I have Larry Stubblefield, who's the Associate Administrator of the Office of Veteran Business Development at the SBA. And I also have Kim Ford, who's an SVP of Government Affairs over at one of our amazing partners, Fiserv. And today we wanna to get some straightforward tactical advice and logistics and information to you about the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. So as you can see, this is a huge economic stimulus program um, that has about $28.6 billion tied to it. And there's a lot of questions around what is it? How are we rolling it out? What are we doing? What do I need to know as a veteran business owner? And what can I do to be ready for when applications open? So we're going to touch on that today. But most importantly, too, we're also going to make sure that you all are aware of who the resources and resource partners and organizations that you can work with as a small business owner so that inevitably when you have more questions as we roll forward on this, you can get those questions answered. A few quick reminders. You can already see the chat is open. So if you have questions or thoughts or if you need links, please ask them in the chat. We'll make sure... To, to look at those and we can ask as many questions as we can out today. But also, like I said, we'll be giving you some FAQs as we roll forward too. Another quick reminder, 
we also are going to be recording this session today. So you'll see that we have a closed captioner on here. We'll make sure that the session gets into your hands so that you can also refer back to it as well in, in, um, in a look back. So with that, I stand between you and some great knowledge. So I'm going to give my panelists just a couple of minutes to introduce themselves and who they are, and then we'll get into what is RRF, what should you know about it, and things like that. Um, Larry, I'm going to pass it over to you um, as one of our, well, obviously, and I'll just give a little bit of background. The SBA has been a longtime partner of the IVMF. We said it the other day when we were on a call with Larry, frankly, there wouldn't be, or the IVMF wouldn't be what it is today without partners like the SBA and Pfizer, frankly, for that matter. So we're really excited that you join us here today, Larry. If you can just go ahead and give a little quick introduction about yourself, and then we'll go over to Ken. All right. Thank you, Misty. And let me just start by thanking you and IVMF for hosting today's ceremony, or today's uh, webinar, rather. Uh, this event is very important as we get information out to the field, if you will, in terms of this new program. Also very honored to be on with Kim Ford from Pfizer. And so a little bit about me. I'm uh, Larry Stubblefield, as uh, Misty said. I'm with the Office of Veterans Business Development at SBA. We are in the business of uh, empowering transitioning service members, veterans, military spouses, reservists, and National Guardsmen with the tools that they need to either start, grow, or expand a business. I've been with SBA now since uh, 2015, and prior to coming to SBA, I was with uh, the, in the Pentagon, actually, with the Department of the Army, and I am a Army retired officer. Great, thank you very much, Larry. And Kim, I'm very glad that this webinar today got brought our past back together. So it's exciting to see you again. Obviously, Pfizer is an amazing partner here at the IVMF as well with the Coalition of Veteran-Owned Business and the Center of Excellence, which really pulls together resources. And one of the resources will be just this, how do we get this into folks' hands? So if you can give a quick introduction of yourself, that would be great as well. Absolutely great to see you, Misty. Larry, always a pleasure to, to serve on these types of discussions with you. So, uh, you know, I'm just so honored and, and privileged to be here. Uh, we're so proud of our partnership with IVMF as well as the SBA. Uh, as many of you all know, we are a provider of a lot of different types of financial services and, uh, you know, have a long history of supporting veteran-owned businesses as well as our own uh, military associates uh, through our different employee resource groups. So i um, excited to, to get things started and hopefully answer a bunch of questions that you all may have about this program. Thanks so much. So now let's get into the meat of why we're here today. We know that restaurants have been heavily impacted by what has gone on during this pandemic, and we know that it's kind of ever-changing. But Larry, can you give us just a quick overview of the Restaurant Revitalization Fund? What is it? Who it's for? Top line items. And then we can kind of dig into that as we move forward. Okay, thank you for that, Misty. Let, let me just start with probably the number one question that everyone has, and that's when is this going to be available? So it, we have not set a date yet, but it's coming real soon. And uh, the, the program basically, basically, like you just said, Misty, you know, we all know that the restaurant, uh, food and beverage industry has been hit really hard. And in this most recent, economic stimulus package, $28.6 billion was set aside for the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. The, uh, the important point here too, and it's noted on the slide, is that when we do open up the portal and the funding becomes available, the first 21 days of the, uh, the RRF, if you will, is going to be set aside for uh, veterans, women-owned businesses and those who are business owners who are socially or economically disadvantaged. So the bottom line with, with the um, Restaurant Revitalization Fund is we want to, uh, in terms of pandemic-related revenue loss, we want to uh, provide business owners, make up for that loss at a maximum of $10 million per business, no more than $5 million per physical location, and, the, and another good thing about the program, the provided funds, you know, if, you're, if they're used for what their intended purposes are, the, 
there's you don't have to worry about paying anything back or anything like that. I will say that if you don't use the funds before the end of the, the period, which is uh, 11 March 2023, every year there's a, a self audit requirement to go back into the SBA portal and, and uh, self audit yourself. And then at the end of the funding period, uh, after the funds are used, uh, there's a certification uh, period as well. A good thing with this program, it's a little easier than some of the other programs we've rolled out. There's no requirement to, to register in SAM.gov. You don't have to worry about DUNS numbers or CAGE numbers or anything like that. So we're excited. We're looking forward to rolling the program out real soon. I know we're gonna talk a little bit about the call center. I will tell you that the call center is stood up right now and it's running as we speak. And there'll be a little bit more information uh, on the call center as we go forward here today. Fine with my mute button. You would think after a year or so into this that we'd figure that part out, but we learn something new every day. So Larry, just to dig in on that for just one second, I know that you said application dates haven't quite said it, where can folks go or how do they know where to go to apply? How can they apply? Where should they be kind of checking right now for those updates so they're ready when it does Okay, open? so we have, um, if you go to sba.gov forward slash restaurant, that is a valuable, a very valuable source of information. We have a, a, a a very good program guide there, as well as a sample application. And I would highly recommend to uh, our viewers that they go to that sample application and just practice it. Because uh, when the portal opens up, everything is either gonna be done online or through one of our restaurant providers. So for now, the, the program guide, the sample application, and then our district offices are another uh, source of information. Perfect, thank you so much. So we just touched on kind of one of the providers and, and how folks can use that. So Kim, I'm gonna go over to you for a second. So there's definitely a lot of thoughts around who do I need to talk to about getting all my stuff together? Is it my bail team? Who are these restaurant providers, et cetera? What, what, what do I do next to make sure that I have the information I need so that when I'm filling out my sample thing, so I know when to, what to get together, that I have it together? It sounds like you know a little bit about what that all looks like. Can you talk to me a little bit about point of sale providers and how you all kind of fit into this mix as well? Absolutely. So if you all are familiar with other SBA programs, generally when SBA rolled out a, a loan program, like for instance, the PPP, many of you all are aware of that from, from the CARES Act last year, um, the SBA rolled that out through bank partners. And this time they're doing it a little bit differently. And this is where Fiserv is also uh, directly involved because they've selected a few what they're calling ecosystem partners uh, and Clover, which is our point of sale uh, terminal as well as you know, our point of sale service is one of the ecosystem partners that is, is working with SBA uh, to make it possible for our restaurant clients to you know, kind of expedite the, the process, if you will. So if you see here on the screen, um, this is how we're gonna be approaching it. There will be other ecosystem partners that may have a little bit slightly different approach. But the idea here is that you are gonna need, Larry mentioned the application and you can see that online. It's a four page application, very straightforward, but you will need obviously information about your business, including your, you know, your transaction volume, your gross receipts, so that the SBA then knows how much fund to provide you. And that's where Clover comes in because we will display what the information is in terms of your receipts that you can then essentially attach as a PDF to your application to go ahead and, and proceed with the SBA's RRF application. Uh, again, because this is a, it's a first come first serve program, the faster you can get that correct information together, you know, that's really what we're trying to go for. And I just want to note, this is the this is support that's happening at no cost, at least from Clover's standpoint, right? So if you right. are a Clover customer, this will be available to you at no cost. And it's really just designed to, to try to make it as fast as possible for our customers to apply. 
But I think that right there is also a great point. And Larry, I know that we'll dive into that a little bit as well, that there are resource partners out here, whether it's your point of sale provider, whether it's, you know, SBA resource partners, there are resource partners out here that are here to help you. So I think one thing that folks could definitely see, and we saw it, you know, in, in some areas too, that you shouldn't be getting a call from someone that says, you know, for $300, we can blah, 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 put this together. Like this is something that can be brought together for you. So don't pay for the ability to apply to these things, which I think is a huge thing to kind of point out there. Um, so I also want to kind of talk about too, though, there's a lot of other resources out, you know, for these small business owners. And, you know, and I know that there's a lot of questions around eligibility. So me as a business owner, what am I eligible for? Who's eligible for this program? Now, specifically in this case, Larry, there's, you know, what we're looking at is priority groups. Can you kind of discuss in a little bit more detail who's eligible? What does that look like? Who are these priority groups? And then we can kind of, you know, look into that a little further too. I think we have a, a slide. Yeah, here yep, we go. Got it. Yeah. So I, I want to just say um, up front that if you're a nonprofit for this go around, you're not eligible. You know, we believe at SBA that the uh, $28.6 billion is probably gonna go really quickly. And we're very hopeful that there'll be another round and maybe uh, nonprofits will be included. But at this particular time, nonprofits are not included. So as you see on the slide, you know, we're talking about restaurants, food stands, food trucks, food carts, caterers, you know, bars and so forth. I'd like to just really point out, like looking at, uh, some of the entries here in terms of like ba um, the bakeries, brew pubs, and a few others where it talks about the 33% on gross receipts on site. You know, we have had uh, questions have come in in terms of say you're a, you do online wine sales and things of that nature. No, we're talking about 33% of your gross receipts have got to be on site. So this slide here just talks about uh, who is eligible, and um, and that point about the uh, the gross receipts. So this is all about your gross receipts in in 2019 compared to your gross receipts in, in uh, 2020. And as Kim pointed out, you know this is the time. What what we would highly recommend that in between the time in between today and the time we open up the portal that you take advantage of this time to prepare, prepare yourself and be ready. So you should be working with the, uh, our district offices and your CPAs to use this time to prepare your documentation. And so that when the portal opens, um, you're, you're ready to go. Now in terms of the first 21 days, um, uh, the, as I said before, the first 21 days, once the portal opens up, it's, we'll accept applications, but the only applications that will be processed for funding are those for veteran-owned businesses, the socially or economic, economically disadvantaged businesses. And again, we're talking about 51% uh, ownership of those businesses to include uh, managing the day-to-day -day operations for those businesses. And Larry, what do I need to have if I'm a veteran business owner or if I'm in one of these other groups? How are we... Like, what do I need to have ready to certify that I'm a business, a veteran business owner or a 51% ownership? What are the items that, or how okay. are we doing that in we, this case? We, we have a slide in here, I think, on documentation and so forth. But for the most part, this is self-certification. Okay. So you're going to self, you're going to self-certify that you are a veteran on business. And that's, uh, that's uh, covered in the application um process, if you will, the, uh, the application form. So mm -hmm. veteran business owners will, will self-certify. Okay. And then when it comes to the other group, we talked about socially and economic dis economically disadvantaged. What is or where can I find that definition as well to know if that's a group that I fit into? Is it on this slide? Is this it? Yeah, right here? we got it right here on the slide. Look at us, just totally totally prepared for this. So this is great. So I can find it out right here on the slides. These slides will be coming out um, with this presentation as we send out um, 
this after this presentation. So you'll get it this week as well for those of you who are on it or for those of you who also registered. But here are the priority groups kind of lined out. It looks like all four of these priority groups will be processed within the first 21 days. It's not just veterans and women are in the way that it's listed here. It's all four of these priority groups will be the ones that are prioritized in the first 21 days, right? That is correct. That is okay, correct. great. That's I a good thing. To point, point out too, like when we, you know, you know, and talking with our Office of Capital Access, looking at that 51% ownership, it can be a combination you know, of, mm -hmm. you know, everyone in the priority group, for example, you could have a, a veteran that's, you know, 20% ownership of a company and maybe uh, a woman is 31%. As long as you get to that 51%, um, that is the required um, percentage to put you in this priority group, if you will. Perfect. That's actually a really great point there. So, on all of these, I know we just said for veteran, it's self-certified. I'm assuming for the women-owned business, it's self-certified as well? That is correct. Okay. So then I have a question for you, um, and I'm not sure if we have the answer now, but you know, we can always follow up on it. So this program, there's a lot of restaurants and breweries that open their doors right after the pandemic started, um, or some of them were in development you know, prior to the pandemic and didn't get their first sale until April or later. Are they eligible? What are what's kind of the criteria around those that might have decided to open their doors yeah, right in time for COVID? You know, there's a slide in here for that as well. So yeah. there's, yeah, this slide yeah, right here perfect. just talks about the three different calculations. So the first one is, you know, e is obviously the easiest one. That's if you're in business, you know, starting on uh, one January. Uh, 2019 all the way through uh, our current date. So there you're looking at the 2019 gross uh, receipts minus the 2020 gross receipts and, and backing out any PPP loans. The second calculation just talks about if you uh, started sometime, your business sometime in, in uh, 2019. And so now we're looking at taking your average uh, gross uh, receipts, you know, time 12 to come up with that number. And again, minus in the 2020 receipts and PPP. But then that third one to your question, Misty, is the, the business owner who uh, started the, may have started the business, but didn't go into full operations, but then, but it has incurred costs. So there's a calculation for that, uh, that business owner as well. And I will point out that you know, there's a difference between starting and then having to um, shut down because of COVID or shutting down your business, you know, permanently. If you shut down your business permanently, you're now eligible for the RRF. Okay, okay, that's good to know as well. So uh, then another question I have is if folks go through and we see this in the chat, if folks go through and fill out their sample and get everything together, can they take that information directly into the other application or is the sample one just for reference only? It's not the saved sample, anywhere. The sample is for reference only. You, when we open up the portal, you will uh, go into the portal and fill it out online. Perfect. So um, just to answer a couple questions in the chat real quick or to reiterate a few things. Yes, you're gonna get a copy of the slides. You're gonna get a copy of the FAQs. You're gonna get a copy of this webinar right here. So never fear in trying to write all this down or take pictures and things like that. Pay attention to the, the folks here and you'll get everything else that's in writing in writing after this. So Kim and Larry, I think this is a good time too to chat about there are some folks that might be realizing right now that, oh, I'm not eligible, but there's a lot of other resources that I need right now for my business. And so I do want to take a, a second to chat about those resources as well. I know Kim um, Pfizer has rolled out quite a few items for small business owners across the nation during this time. And then Larry, always, even when there's not restaurant revitalization or PPP or anything else like that going on, there's amazing resource partners that can help businesses can we take a second to sort of talk about those resources and then circle back into some of these details, um, you know, as we look to uh, get those questions out there and wrap up a few things. 
Yeah, Misty, I'll jump in real quick. So, you know, I, I will say, obviously, uh, I know that there's probably some anxiety, not just about the fact that uh, we're trying to operate through a pandemic, but the fact that this, this is first come, first serve, the money might, might run out. I totally get that. Again, Clover is committed to being a partner, you know, to our clients to help expedite that. Um, but, but keep in mind as well that, for instance, you know, your provider, hopefully it's Clover, but for, for those who work with other companies, should also be helping you with things like how to do curbside, how to do online ordering, right? So, you know, even if you're having slower traffic than you had, you know, definitely talk to your point of sale provider about that kind of technology that's available because, right, if for some reason you can't get into the RRF, you know, but you want to expand some of those services, that's obviously something that uh, can 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 help you, uh, you know, navigate the, these next few months. Um, and, and just again, you know, and I know Larry's going to mention a couple of the other programs programs that the SBA has, um, you know, Fiserv has also uh, rolled out this back to business program. We actually started it months ago uh, in the middle of the pandemic where we were really just trying to find ways again to support a variety of our, our businesses, our small businesses. And so um, we have gone out and provided uh, financial grants. So just checks uh, to businesses that apply to us. You can see on the screen here um, where you can apply for that grant. It's the Fiserv back to business grant, uh, but we're also, again, sharing expertise around how to, you know, do your curbside and online ordering, what kind of terminals might help you facilitate that, where you can go take, you know, go right to a car and have them swipe their card right there. Um, and we also uh, try to match with um, businesses with community partners, right? So again, what, you know, kinds of institutions might be uh, helping in your, your neighborhood. So keep that in mind. Again, obviously financial assistance is extremely important, but getting the right technology in place uh, is also also vitally important. So ho hopefully you're asking the right questions, but if we can be helpful in that regard as well, please let us know. Yeah, and, and I'll, I want to start with the, it's on the screen here now, the SBA call center, yep. you know, that's associated with the RRF. You know, it, the uh, call center as indicated here is, you know, it's open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. You can also leave a message. So the reason why I'm I'm mentioning this right now is if you're uh, looking at the application form, you know, going through the program guide, you have questions, you should definitely reach out to the call center. There's like about 150 customer service uh, representatives there that are there for you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, I mentioned earlier about our local district offices. They're, they're holding on a regular basis now information sessions associated with this new funding. And you should sign up for updates with your local district offices as well uh, to keep stay informed in, in terms of the, um, the RRF and when it's gonna be rolled out and so forth. But aside from that, as always, we have our 68 district offices located around the country. Um, and we have our resource partners, our veteran business outreach centers. There's 22 veteran business outreach centers. They cover all 50 states and US territories. We also have our small business development centers, our women business centers, and our score chapters. So all told, you know, there are uh, thousands of uh, business advisors all around the country, you know, leaning forward, ready to help, you know, at every, every step of the way of your entrepreneurial journey. But for this particular program, you know, again, I would I would just emphasize to reach out to the call center, the SBA okay. call center, or your district office, you know, for the latest information or any technical assistance you might need in uh, uh, applying for the funding. Thanks so much. A um, couple of questions, I think, just to kind of round out eligibility as we have, you know, talked a little bit about it, but just to get some, you know, finer points. Um, Larry actually just mentioned a lot of different offices too, especially regional offices. Taylor just put in a great link in there for you folks. If you're ever interested to understand what's in your backyard or who covers your area, because some of these are more regionally approached, please use that as well. Um, so Larry, if someone had already received either the IDLE or the PPP, can they also apply for RRF? Yes, the, the PPP will be backed out of the funding that they okay. receive. And then the other um, resources that have been provided will not be, will not be counted um, in that calculation. 
Very, very helpful. And then another question, and so more of a, um, I guess, a nuance. So some folks have, you know, and you've seen them before, bookstores with cafes or a wine store with cafes, or is there a way that folks can apply for this to run that while their business might be retail, they still have that restaurant front? Is there a way that this can be used to help run that cafe? Is there a way for them to look into that? Yeah, we may have to. And what I would, what I would also say with a question like that, again, uh, you may want to approach the, the call center because that, to be honest with you, where this is like, you know, we always talk about building a, a plane as you fly. Right. So, so We're questions are right coming part. up. Yeah, questions are coming up every day like that. So that's great. So I think what we've learned, we've learned a lot here, right, is make sure that you are friends with your point of sale people. Make sure that you know your point of sale people extremely well so they can help kind of pull these things together. Um, and then also look at, you know, programs like Pfizer has other great programs too. So if this isn't the one that quite can get there with your business, understand that there are a lot of programs out there. Um, we also say, you know, that it takes a village. And I think typically we're talking about raising children, but in a way that also works for small businesses. The SBA has had some amazing resource partners that it can come together to make sure that your business is where it needs to be and that you can learn about these opportunities kind of up front as well. And I think that, you know, big takeaway I have before I pass it over to Kim and Larry to kind of talk about anything that we missed or any key takeaways that you wanna leave with these veteran entrepreneurs today is that check back, stay engaged and engage in the community and with your partners so that you can make sure that as these things come out, you're in the best position to take advantage of them. I would always say, you know, make sure to reach out to us here at the IVMF and we'll get you to the right resource in the least amount of time to make sure that you have what you want for your um, small business. But I do want to pass it over to Larry and then to Kim about, you know, some, any key takeaways that you all have or any last thoughts that you'd like to leave with these entrepreneurs today. Sure. I, I, again, I go back to what I said earlier. We believe the 28.6 billion is, is going to go very quickly. So um, use this time wisely to prepare, you know, work with your, like I said earlier, work with your, your CPA, you know, our district offices, get, be prepared for that 21 day set aside period. Because, you know, after that 21 day period, the, the funding opens up to everyone. And we really believe it's gonna go quickly. Thank you. And I, yeah. I would just add, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I would remind folks that uh, the SBA was given this authority from Congress. Congress gave them some details, but there's a lot that they're still trying to figure out. And, uh, you know, they're doing a tremendous job with not a lot of time or resources. And so um, I echo Larry, if you can get prepared now, you can see on the SBA.gov restaurant site, there's a ton of information. There's the information about eligibility. There's the information about what socially disadvantaged means. There's information about the eligibility eligible use of the funds and what that means, right? So, so take a look at that. It's very plain English. It's easy to understand. Please talk to your Clover reps. Please come to Pfizer. Let us help you. Let us help you get at the front of the line, if at all possible. Um, we know how hard this time is and, and you do have support. We are all, we are all ready to help. Yeah, and I think just a few final reminders as well, everyone. Um, I know there's a lot of folks on on the chat today and everything that's and that's going on. Um, while here at the Institute, we're veteran focused. Understand that this this program is for everyone. As Larry said, there's you know the four priority groups, but from there, it is good to you know get in line. We do think that this is going to go quickly. So. While we'll be sharing a lot of the FAQs and the recording and a lot of the slides that were all shared today with you when we wrap this presentation, understand that it is also good to go out and tell your networks as well about programs like this and about the SBA resource partners and things that you can really be keen into all year long. You know, those VBOX and the SBDCs and SCORE and everyone is here all year round for you. And even groups like the IVMF, 
FISERV. So while this is one program that's rolling out and as we are building the plane and trying to fly it as well, being keyed into those folks all year long will really make a difference to you and your small business because you'll be right there at the top of it to make sure that you can get all the information and resources that you need to continue to move forward. I know it's been a tough year for everyone, so I really hope that you know folks can get into the resources that they need as well. So with that, I do want to say thank you very, very much for our panelists for coming together today. I know we did so on very quick notice, and I appreciate us getting this information into these small business owners' hands. I also want to say thank you again to the team here at IVMF and at Pfizer and SBA for being able to pull all that together. And thank you to all the folks that signed in today. We really do appreciate your time. We hope we are able to answer some questions for you. We will make sure to get more information into your hands as we have it, but thanks for being here today. So thank you, Larry. Thank you, Kim. Thanks team. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks so much. Thank you.